Hey there, welcome to Oman Runner. In today's video, I'm going to do this, the On Running Cloud Neo. First, I'm going to show a short video of me running around in them. Then I'm going to put them on the turntable and list their specifications. Then I'm going to review them and their subscription model. And finally, I'm going to see if I can recommend them. I bought the shoe because I was interested in a few things. On say it's a 100% sustainable shoe and On have introduced a subscription package. And in this video, I'm going to try and find out, is the shoe sustainable? Does the subscription represent value for money or a penalty for the sustainability? What's the shoe like to run in? So there'll be a lot of stuff I'm gonna delve in and as always, there'll be chapter markers down below so you can skip ahead to the bits you're interested in. I usually don't do unboxing videos, but I have made an unbagging video uh, before. And here we go again, because these shoes come in a bag. The bag is simply secured with Velcro. It comes with a return label. I recommend sticking on that bag immediately so you don't forget it or lose it. In six months time, you need to send it back. And here are the shoes in all their pristine undiedness. They won't look like this when I send them back in six months time. I went out to make a short video of the shoes running around Castletown House, about 20 kilometers from Dublin. It's one of Ireland's finest country houses and I thought it'd make a nice location. So I went out, I'll show a previous picture that I took uh, more Typical view of the of the thing with a lot of rain clouds, that's typically Ireland. Didn't quite pan out as I went. The morning was beautiful. There wasn't a lot of people around and I thought this is gonna be perfect. And I arrived and the full facade was full of scaffolding. So uh, I made what turned out to be probably a better video um, by taking the park run courses, a five kilometer park run around the grounds. And uh, so all the shots of the shoes were taken on the park run course. So let's go for a run. Let's see the shoes in action. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my run around Castletown Park Run course. I stayed actually, I hadn't planned to, but I stayed to actually test the shoes by running the Park Run and the 5K race. And uh, just thanks to all the volunteers who uh, helped on the day. So let's put the shoes on the turntable and review their specifications. On running say that the shoe weighs 255 grams or 8.99 ounces. This shoe is US Men's 13, EU 48, UK 12.5, JP 31. In this size, it weighs in the left shoe, 318 grams or 11.20 ounces, and the right shoe, 323 grams, 11.40 ounces. It has a 33 millimeter stack height. It has a nine millimeter drop. 
On running, say this about the Cloud Neo. The Cloud Neo is made for speed. Inspired by our elite racing shoes, the extreme rocker silhouette comes from the hidden speed board, which is made from 100% bio-based material. Twin Cloud Tech provides soft yet responsive protection as you strike the asphalt. Pure material, pure power. Where high performance meets sustainability. One single cut of fabric, no excess material, zero waste. After you've worn them down, send them back and we'll send you a new pair as we recycle the old ones. The running revolution starts with you. Let's review the shoe and see if what On Running says is true. Let's have a look at the upper, which On say is made from a single cut. So I'll stick the light of truth in and you can kind of see uh, how breathable the shoe is, lots of micropores. You can actually see how the On logo is stamped into the, or pressed, probably using heat into the fabric. And the fabric has got lots of different holes depending on where it is in the shoe and some strengthening pieces. But uh, it's a very simple upper. I'm always saying this, but On have a, a different lacing pattern design for every shoe. And when these arrived, I thought, oh, these are gonna be really easy. Um, nothing, I thought the, the weird lacing department had taken an off day at on running. But uh, actually they, they loop out and then in on, on, on all the sides, particularly at the top, the only shoe I have that do that. Um, very comfortable to lace up when I was doing the park run 5K, which I hadn't intended to do, so I wasn't really prepared for much, just laced up and off I went, and they came untied uh, in each shoe. So that'd be the only thing I would say, but ver very comfortable. Um, the uh, uh, there's, there's something in the heel structure. I don't know what it is, whether it's two layers of the, uh, of the fabric or whatever, but there is some sort of structure in the heel. There's also, curiously enough, a plastic film running down where the laces are. The eyelets, I think, are, are there by um, heat. I think that's how they, they create them rather than sewing, is what I read. But there is a little plastic, a transparent piece of film inside here, which presumably is recyclable along with the rest of the shoe. The midsole has a speedboard sandwich through it. I'll come into the materials later. But the great thing is there isn't the, uh, the stone catchers that uh, on shoes are notorious for there's a sort of you can see through the little things there's not the clouds per se are, are thin one of the things that happened on the uh, on the run was they got covered in dust which actually is quite useful because you can see more of what's going on by the dust so you can see with the outsole so there's a little outsole here and here with a different material which again i'll come on to and you can probably see it says cyclone in here so you get a bit of better idea of the dust uh, I really wonder what shape these will be. When I'm finally finished with them, I hope to sew them in half so I can get a better look at some of the materials and then, then send them back for recycling. The shoe fits true for me in the UK 12.5. I usually take a 12, but it equates in on terms to an EU 48 and a US men's 13, which I do take. On say it's the lightest shoe ever. It's not. Um, it's uh, 318 grams or 11.20 ounces, which is light. But this, the on running Cloud Boom Echo is 273 grams or 9.6 ounces. So I don't know why they lie about this stuff, but anyway, or make a mistake, but it's not the lightest shoe, but it is a light shoe. The shoe is aesthetically quite simple. Um, one color undyed and uh, with details stamped into it. I think the Swiss flag uh, here might be a, a, an applique, but uh, effectively they seem to be going away from their clouds possibly to just have a new style direction or whatever, but they're smaller on this and in some ways remind me of the Cloud Boom Echo prototype that seemed to pop up on the onside a few months ago. So what do they like to run in? Well, on the park run, they were nice. I ran a range of paces. I wasn't my usual MO, but I started slow to sort of finish fast. Um, I found they were firm. Uh, I suppose a lot of on shoes are firm. I mean, if you want a soft uh, on shoe, this, the Cloud Monster, would be probably the one to go for. But uh, I mean, I liked the ride. I thought it rolled along nice, but it was firm. And uh, as in most on shoes, the grip, it was nothing special. It was there, but you know, it was fine. Now for the rabbit hole of sustainability. A lot of companies get involved in a lot of greenwashing. So it is quite hard to get to the bottom of a lot of this stuff. So I'll just go through some of it. As it happens, I buy a lot of shoes. So I'm reviewing them on YouTube. So I have a lot of shoes. Um, and I suppose one of the things I always think about and what I'm trying to do is, give more information than I think the manufacturers do. Hopefully that will lead to people making better choices about the shoes they buy and hopefully reduce the great shoe mountain. Now, I will admit there could be just a whole heap of self justification in that, but that's how I convince myself that buying a number of shoes is sustainable. 
Let's look at these ones. The shoes are made in Vietnam and uh, they come to Ireland via Kuhn and Nagel. Anna are very good at publicizing all this stuff and, um, and you can find all this stuff on the website and there's lots of FAQs I, I encourage you to go and read. Um, the only disadvantage with these shoes is they're making, most of the shoes make one journey to me. These obviously make a journey to me and then they've got to go back again. So that's the only disadvantage I can see in the sustainability argument. Most shoes that arrive in, uh, by courier come by uh, cardboard boxes. Um, the shoe that didn't, the only one that didn't, was my Atreyu base model that came in a plastic bag that had been made of recycled materials and was also recycled, very minimal, and I'm a great fan of, of that. Um, most come in these big heavy boxes. This is a very well-designed heavy box by uh, On Running and Inside, and this is another box that the shoe comes in. This is... Um, 614 grams or 21.7 ounces whereas the bag that on running sent is uh, about a sixth of the weight 105 grams 3.7 ounces and uh, i think it's fantastic i wish they'd ship all of the shoes in bags because obviously saving weight really does help the environment um i don't know how many times the uh, how many cycles this particular bag is designed for um i know that i'm wondering that when i send it back in six months do they send me back exactly the same bag Maybe I'll put a marker in. <laughs> um, or is it is it uh, someone else's bag and they just get flipped around? I imagine that's what happens. Um, and I don't know how many cycles they're designed for. When I used to work in a fiberboard box making company in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in my student summer days, um, we would make beer cartons and they were designed to go out and back 18 times. So I don't know how many cycles this is designed for, but I guess we'll find out. To return to the shoe. One of my favorite books is Cradle Cradle from 2002 by Bramgart and McDonough, Remaking the Way We Make Things. I think everyone should read that book. Um, I'm gonna, well, it's time to oversimplify the book, but essentially you've got a tree and the leaves fall from the tree. You add in an energy source, sunlight, and it grows and it's, it's a closed loop system. Most things that are made of modern materials, there's bits of plastic and bits of metal. If you think of your typical phone, bits of glass, all that sort of stuff. It's hard to separate those, those of us who are keen recyclers, I certainly am, uh, it's, uh, that frustrates me very much. But On have tried to make this out of as little materials as possible. On have done a great job in reducing the number of components in a typical shoe from about 60 down to less than 10. All of the materials come from castor beans, which are grown. Um, Arkema have been doing this since I think about 1949. The Peabax family of Peabax and Rilsan. Most of you will have heard of Peabax. Um, the midsole is made of Peabax, as in many shoes, many shoe companies, but in different formulations. The outsole is from unfoamed Peabax, so it looks very different. Uh, the speedboard is also made of similar material. And then the upper is made from what I think is real sand, but again, it's from the same family, same castor beans, and that also includes the laces. So uh, my understanding is when it goes back to Vietnam, it fires in one shoot and gets chopped up and the materials are, are repurposed again. I'm guessing that along the way, some of it will wear off, I mean, because shoes wear down marginally, and uh, I'm guessing they need an energy source. But effectively, they've made a closed loop cycle. So, chapeau. Let's talk about the cost. So it's only available from on via a monthly subscription, which costs, it's, they list them on the website, but effectively it's $29.95 in Euro, $29.99 in the US, 25 pounds sterling in the UK, and 44.95 Australian dollars. You pay six months and you use the shoe and then you send it back for recycling. Now to keep this simple, because we're gonna do some delve down in some math, I'm gonna say when it's 29.99 or 29.95, I'm just gonna say 30 bucks, otherwise I'll drive us all crazy. The shoes aren't available in every territory. On are trying to group the shipping to reduce the carbon footprint, so they might not be available where you are for the moment. Um, I ordered mine in September 2020 and they arrived 12th of August. 2022 and on uh, gave me and I presume everybody else two months free uh, subscription because of the delays which were all understandable and these are not easy shoes to make and, and to get the whole model working um, they're not available at the moment as far as I can see in Australia New Zealand Norway and several other territories if you don't like the shoe you can do the standard on thing you can wear it inside and, and uh, uh, cancel after 30 days in other words not run the park run and cover it in dust but send it back in pristine conditions other than that, your subscription lasts for six months and it's billed monthly. You can cancel after the six months and um, you should return the shoe. If you don't, there's a sustainability fee of 100 euro, $100, 80 pounds or 150 Australian dollars 
thankfully none of that 99 cent or 95 cent stuff simple and clean 100 180 150 so time for some calculations i'm going to dispense with all of that 99 cent 95 cent stuff it'll drive us mad so this shoe in the us or ireland costs 180 bucks this shoe in ireland costs 180 bucks so most people will get 600k out of a shoe uh I won't, I'll do about 300 kilometers. This shoe, 300 kilometers, about 186 miles. This shoe has 300 kilometers, the previous generation of Cloud Stratus, and it's worn here, and it's worn here, and it's worn here, and it's worn there. Now it's still runnable in, but I've got a lot of shoes, and, and I found that the foam begins to lose wear after about 300 kilometers. So I typically park the shoes after about 300 kilometers. Now, to try and make some comparative value, I'm gonna typically run 300 kilometers in this shoe and 300 kilometers in this shoe in six months and I'm going to try and see how they match up. I'm guessing most people will run 600 kilometers in the shoe but yeah 300 kilometers in this shoe for me for 180 bucks is what I'm going to try and do and then make a video all about it. In 2021 I ran 2400.54 kilometers and uh, let's let's make life simple 2400 kilometers can make it really easy i didn't target that just happened and um that equates to 1491.29 miles but 2400 kilometers so i would run 1200 kilometers in six months 600 kilometers in three months so let's say i want to run 300 kilometers in this shoe in six months that'll be 25 percent of my running now what i'm trying to get at here is that the shoe you might want it to fit into your rotation and I'm going to be trying to do a quarter of my runs in this shoe till I get to 300k and uh, on do say that if you have exceptional wear in the shoe they will take him back after three months so again I'm going to challenge myself to a six month 300 kilometer video and see what the wear on them is like my personal view of on shoes is they wear a bit quicker than many of my other shoes. But if I get 300K out of them in six months, as a comparison to the Cloud Stratus, well, that'll be okay. So, so far, so fair. At the start of this rather long video, I asked three questions effectively. Was, is the shoe sustainable? I think it is. Yeah, I think they've done a really good job in this. It'll be very interesting to see how it evolves in the next couple of months. But yeah, I think they've done a very good job. Does it represent value for money? I think, yeah, it does. I think I'll probably get the same wear out of these in, in six months as I would out of the Cloud Stratus. And, and I'm guessing even though other people will be running more distances than I would in that time. For me and for most people, I think it probably makes fair value for money. And I don't think you're paying a premium for the sustainability. So oftentimes you buy organic beef or anything like this and you're paying a massive amount of money. These look like comparatively a fair deal. And then I suppose the last thing to say is, is, is it good to run in? Well, yes, I mean, it's very firm in the way on shoes are firm, but yeah, I, I enjoyed my park run immensely in them. Should you buy this shoe? Well, it's reasonably comfortable and it's reasonably fast and it's not unreasonably priced. I think that most people watching these videos probably have a variety of shoes and it could fit happily into most people's shoe rotation. If on the other hand, you only want to run this shoe, you could do that too. And you could uh, probably rotate it back to on more frequently than I might. It's not the most comfortable shoe I have or the fastest shoe I have, but quite possibly it's the most important. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff down in the description below and I'll happily answer any questions that you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some related videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.